Hi guys, this is Angela and welcome to my channel. I think picking colors is a combination of your natural artistic instincts plus a very solid foundation of art knowledge. In this video, instead of just covering stuff from the top of my head, I thought it would be best if I actually introduce you guys to my top recommended book, Color and Light by James Gurney. I'll be rereading this book and taking notes on chapters on color before I decide which ones I will want to introduce to you guys. So I just finished reading the book and it took me a lot less time than I thought. I took about maybe um, 16 pages of notes on this tiny little sketchbook. And here are the 12 chapters that I'll be going over one by one. The first chapter I chose is Direct Sunlight. There are three different sources of illumination under direct sunlight. The sun, blue sky, and reflected light from illuminated objects. The skylight is diffused and soft. If the air is clear, then the sky will likely be blue, and shadows will be darker and bluer. If there's more clouds, then the overall color palette will be grayer. If it's hazy and has smog, then the overall color palette will be close to the sunlight. The second chapter covers a warmer light source, candlelight, firelight, lantern light. All of these light sources will appear more yellow and orange. All these lights are fairly weak and drops off rapidly away from the light source. They are usually more noticeable after sunset and you will see a halo of warm orange around it. The third chapter is hidden light source. There are three ways to light a scene. The first is from outside of the picture. The second is a light source inside the picture and easy to see. And the third is a light source inside the picture but concealed from the viewer. This kind of contrast of cool versus warm will make your painting more interesting. The third type of hidden light source will intrigue the viewer and make your painting more mysterious. The fourth point is local color. The local color is the color of the surface as it appears close up in white light. It's the true color of the material. However, we don't normally just paint with local colors. We tend to lighten and darken the local color to depict form. And we might also try to push it back in atmosphere by shifting hues. Next one is gradation. Gradation just means gradients. It could be from one hue to another, or a lighter color to a darker color, or a very dull, desaturated color to a saturated color. Visualize the gradients that you want to see in your painting before you start it. Next up is tints. This is a term usually used in traditional painting. It means by adding white to your color and turning it into a pastel color. We usually use tints when we need to portray a distant landscape on a hazy day. It conveys a feeling of light and airiness. The next one is warm and cool and it's a very important point. Chop the color wheel in half and you get warm colors on one side and cool colors on the other. However, people do have different opinions on greens and violets. Colors evoke emotion. Cool colors reminds us of winter, night, sky, shadow, and ice. Blue represents quietness, restfulness, and calm. Warm colors reminds us of fire, spice, and blood. It's full of energy and passion. Orange and yellow represent sunsets, flowers, and autumn leaves. Using cool colors for your entire painting creates a sense of mystery, darkness, and gloom. But if you want to add further interest, try placing a warm color beside it. They complement each other. The next one is very interesting. It's about color-light interactions. If there are two different light sources within your viewpoint, the two different lights on the object's lit area will mix and create a new color. If you take two light sources of different colors and shine it on the same form, the cast shadow from each light will be the color of the other light source. Next, we have a very interesting question. Is moonlight blue? According to science, moonlight is not blue, it's slightly reddish. According to many artists and their eyes, moonlight tends to be represented by the color blue. For me personally, I still tend to paint moonlight with more blues and greens. The next thing is color corona. Corona just has a completely different meaning to me now. 
color corona appears when there is an extremely bright light source, for example, the setting sun or street light. You will often notice how these light sources are surrounded by a region of colorful glow. This glow will make the light source look even brighter than it is. Next one is atmospheric perspective. Have you ever been on a road trip and wondered why the mountains look so blue in the distance, but when you drive close to it, it appears green again? This is atmospheric perspective. The appearance of objects change as they are viewed at a distance through layers of illuminated air. The foregrounds will appear bolder and more saturated, and gradually it will fade back and match the sky color. Yellow, orange, or green foliage will become gray greenish or blue greenish as it recedes into the background. The contrast of value reduces and blends into a flat plane of hue in distant silhouette. Things to remember warm colors advance, cool colors recede. Next up is my favorite type of lighting golden hour lighting. Golden hour is around dawn or dusk. The sun shines through air at a much lower angle compared to daytime, and the light travels parallel to the surface of the earth. The sky becomes richer and more blue. There are generally more orange and red seen around sunset. Forms will take on a golden color, and their shadows will become a rich blue. The sky near sunset would appear blue on the top and gradually changes into a soft yellow at the bottom. The area near horizon appears dull red, and the region around the sun will appear the brightest. If the sky is full of moisture and dust, then the clouds will become more red and yellow. First hour of morning, the color progression actually reverses the one of sunset. It will appear pinker first. In general, higher clouds will appear whiter, and lower clouds will appear more yellow and red. Lastly, I want to read out a few points listed in his summary chapter. Color and light are closely related. You can't just consider light without considering color. The viewers will see the object you're depicting, but they will feel the color and light. Choose the lighting plan and stick to it. Fourth and finally, compare colors. How a color appear changes when they are placed against different colors. So that's it for the 12 principles. I am hoping to do more videos like this, hopefully on composition, lighting, and all sorts of different art and filmmaking techniques. If you can like and subscribe, that will motivate me to make more videos. It's just perfectly blocking the area I was reading. <laughs>